option for the practice. If not, please download, download it today and start practicing it. So in the previous lecture, I told you that we can use Bob suit for listening the request which is coming from client and which is like uh, the server mm -hmm. is going to respond. So this is a client server architecture in which every application work. We have a client and we have a server. So now what is happening is we discussed about the man in the middle attack. So I hope that most of you are aware about the applications which are running on web. These are known as web applications. Now we are more concerned about the security of the web applications because the employees or the people are accessing these applications from anywhere, from any device. So it is important to check the access level. It is important to see that whatever is available in the application, how much you are able to access it and how much you are able to manage it. So now in this particular Bob suit, we see that we can have this intercept on and we can listen what is going on to the browser, what is coming back to the Bob suit. So these things we have practiced in the yesterday's lecture. If I'm going to restore this, okay. We have seen that we can drop the packets, we can forward the packets, and also we have seen that what all attributes are there we can practice. Also in the previous lecture, we have purchased something from the mall, and then we have changed the pricing for that particular order. So let's see, let me go off this. Okay. So today what we are going to do is we are going to work on a web application. We are going to do the uh, attack on that web application. So for that, I have set up a local server on my system. And on that, I'm going to show you the attacks which can be uh, planned for the applications which are available, those who are having low security. So first, let me open the XAMPP control panel. So I would like to share with you that you can download XAMPP from here. So I'm sharing it with everybody so that those who are new to this, they can download XAMPP from here. This is, and you can download the Bob suit from this location. Also, you need to download your DVWA for testing the, this is a web application which we are going to use. In this, we have a different security levels, which I'm going to tell you. So these are the three things which you require for practicing the attacks, which are known as OWASP top 10 attacks. So sir wanted me to start the camera. So I've started the camera also. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is this XAM server is already up and running. So I'm going to start my server and I'm going to start MySQL also to support the database, which I have. Now I'm going to start a local host. This is my application, which is dam vulnerable web application. If you see over here, so this is a dam vulnerable web application which we can use for testing the different type of attacks and for understanding the basics of those things. Because this is based on PHP and MySQL, so we need a server who can host these things. So what we are going to do is simply you need to download DVWA from this location, download it. You will be getting a zip file. You just have to open that zip file and you have to save that zip file in the htdocs folder of Z. So in the HT, this is the basically the path where you need to store your application. Path to copy DVWA. Unzip your file and copy the file to the path. 
now this particular application is ready to run the name which you have given to this folder as i have given folder name as a dwwa so this is the uh, name with which i can access this uh, website so i am accessing it with the embedded browser with bobsuit so if you see this is a bobsuit environment so i am using a embedded browser so here i can give a username and password so for this dwwa username and password is username is admin and password is so i'm writing in the chat so that if anybody is having any confusion they can go through with these chats i'm sure that atarik sir is sharing the chat also with you so now username and password so i am just entering the username and password over here and i'm going to log in so the when i log in you can see that this page is coming in front of me in which the detailed description is given about the dem vulnerable web application now in this we can practice the most common web vulnerabilities if you remember in the previous lectures i talked about the vulnerabilities that whatever weakness we have or whatever security loopholes we have in our machines means in our software these loopholes and vulnerabilities can be used by the attackers now the instructions are everything is documented you can use it now if you want to test your uh, attacks if you want to learn attacks what you can do is you have to check the dwwa security now in this security if you see we have a low security we have medium security high security and the impossible security so if you want to check and if you want to learn attacks you have to make sure that your dwwa security is set to low if you are not setting it to low it will be difficult for you to practice or plan attacks on this application so make this as a low security and then try to access the attacks so if you know about owasp top 10 i'll discuss with tarik sir if you are not aware about the owasp top 10 attacks in the next lecture or coming sessions we can understand about the owasp top 10 that is open web application project this owasp is open web application security project this is a global community i am member of this community and this community is basically working from last 20 years to improve the security of the web applications and uh, okay so if you want to learn more about this you can visit this website or we can have a session to understand more about owasp top 10 so owasp has given a top 10 ranking to the attacks which can be planned on web applications so if you see this particular website they have almost all the mentioned attack maximum attacks are practiced can be practiced over here with the dwwa so now today i am just going to demonstrate a very simple attack that is a brute force attack i hope that many of you are aware about the brute force attack in which this is also known as a directory dictionary attack in which we have a list of username and passwords and we can have the combination of username and password and we can try to check that which is correct and which can be applicable to this website let's say for this we know that we have a correct username admin and password is password as i told you so if i'm going to log in with the correct username and password i'm going to get this message that welcome to the password protected area admin if this username and password is not correct what happen is i am entering username is this and let's say password any week password i have given so i am getting a message username and password is incorrect now if you know every application is having a certain number of attacks let's say if i am going to try 3 4 times maybe it is having or maybe it is allowing three attempts for me to log in into this portal if i am failing these attempts in the fourth attempt maybe i can get a message that your account is blocked for 24 hours 
after 24 hours you can try because you have exceeded your login attempts so these things can happen if let's say attacker is having a list of username and passwords now those lacks of username and password combinations a user a attacker cannot try like by entering one by one these things they need certain tools to practice the attack so burp suit is helping us in these kind of things because we know that burp suit can sit in between the client and the server so when i am trying to log in from this particular page when i'm saying login i can ask burp suit to listen this login and when the burp suit is listening this i can modify the username and password or i can test the username and password so what i'm going to do right now is i am going to start the proxy for this now burp suit can listen whatever i am sending from this page because this is embedded with the proxy setting of the burp suit okay so now i am randomly entering any username and i am randomly entering any password when i am going to say login i am sure that everybody understands that this request is going to the burp suit so i am sending a login so you see that this circle is moving because it is showing that this is connected with the server and waiting for response but now if you see this particular thing is blinking because this particular request is forwarded to burp suit now we are going to burp suit and if you see this particular scene i am going to copy this i am going to open this now if you see you have entered some username and password that is available with the burp suit now we can see that what username and password users are entered but we are not aware about the correct username and password so what we want is we want to give a correct username and password in response so that we are able to log in to the portal and we can do whatever changes or modification or whatever controls we want from that portal so what i'm going to do right now is in the burp suit if you see that this request is coming and we want to burp suit or we want to attack to two particular area one is the username which you see clearly here i increase the font also so that you can read it properly so here we have a username and we have a password so what we are doing is we want to attack the username and password because we have certain amount of username and password available with us so we want to attack with this username and password and we want to check that which is correct and which is not correct so what i'm going to do is here if you see lot of options are available in the burp suit intruder repeater sequencer decoder few options are available for the community addition but few options are not enabled for the uh, community but luckily this uh, brute force attack option is available we can use the intruder for doing the attack for checking the correct username and password so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to send this request to the intruder so i'm sending this to the intruder when i'm sending this to intruder you can see that this is highlighted so i'm going to intruder and here if you see i have to check that which all fields i want to brute force which all attributes i want to brute force so here if you see this dollar sign i am again going to copy this and i am again going to show you if you see before sending to intruder there were no dollar sign which was available right but now what i am going to do is i am going to add the text which i have taken from the intruder so now the dollar sign is added means intruder is going to work on these particular areas where the dollar is added but our concern is to work on only username and password we are not concerning about the login we are not concerning about the session id we are not concerning about the security level so i am going to remove these dollars 
and I'm only going to do the brute force on the username and password. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these dollars. If you see in the right hand side, there are options to add dollar and clear dollar. So I'm going to clear these dollars, which I don't want. I'm going to keep dollars for the username and password only. So I'm going to save it. Okay. So now username is having dollar, password is having dollar. So both the places is having the proper arrangement. Now in the attack type, there are four options which are mentioned. Now today in the today's session, I'm going to talk about the cluster bomb, which we are going to use for the brute force attack, which I'm demonstrating right now. So in the cluster bomb, we are going to create the cluster of username and password list. And from that cluster, we are going to do the attack. So I have selected the cluster bomb. Now I am going to the payloads. In the payloads, I have again two options. These two options are coming because I have dollar sign at two places. If you see that if I'm going to add the dollar over here and I'm going back to the payloads, you will see that I have a list of three payloads. But what I want to do is I want to only brute force username and password. So I'm removing this again and again going to the payload. So you see that only two payloads are coming. So first payload is indicating the first field. What is the first field? That is the username field. So first is username, second is password. So in the first list, I'm going to add five, six uh, random names for the username. but because I have a community edition, I have to type manually all those things. But if you have pro version, paid version, which I've shown you in that you can completely take a list and you can upload that. So means n number of username you can upload. But in the community edition, we have to manually type it. So I'm typing the uh, few random usernames over here. We are seeing that I'm creating a list of user. Also, I'm going to add a correct username also so that I can, because right now I know that which one is the correct, but maybe the attacker is not aware, right? So let's say I'm also not aware that which one is correct. So I've entered few names for the payload one. Now I'm going to create a payload two. Any random name you can enter because right now you're just testing it. Right? So I've created payload set for two and payload set for one. So if you see the request count is 36, six cross six. So 36 sets will be created and these sets will be attacked on the this page. Right? Now I'm going to, or other options, we cannot work. So I'm going to start this attack. Now this is going to show some message that because you are using a community edition, okay, we know that. Yes. So now the attack is started. If you see the combination username and password, so all the username and password, different combinations are there. So password is attached with all the combination. Then you see that 36 combinations will be targeted on that particular website. So I will show you that how you can see that attack is targeted. Let this finish first. If you all can download these softwares, now I can demo all these things again tomorrow and you can practice it together with me. We can plan other attacks also, which are mentioned like these attacks command injection, CSRF. So we can practice these things. SQL injection also we can practice together. Okay. So it is saying that it is finished. Let's say randomly I have clicked on this particular result. Now in this result, if you see, we have request and response. Two tabs are given over here, 
right? So in the request panel, if you see the username is you name, password is this. So this is a username and password is used to attack this website. In the response, if you see, so how you can read this response, instead of reading it, you can render this response because the rendering job is for the browser. So here we can have the option to render that also. So if I'm going to use you name and PWERT as a password, I'm going to get this username or password is incorrect. So this is not correct. But what if I want to select a correct username and password? I cannot go and check each and every username and password combination. I need to have a certain way through which directly I can check that which is correct and which is not correct. So what I'm going to do is, if you see over here in the length section, you will see that certain rows are have one or two rows are having different length. So like if this you see 4597, this is 4554, all are having 4554 length. So it means this is having a different length and this is admin and password combination. So let's see the response. Welcome to the password protected area admin. So it means it is showing that out of all the 36 combination, this is the combination which is the correct and you can attack with this combination. So now we have brute forced the application. Now we can go back to the proxy and we can change this. We can go back to proxy. We can change with the admin. Welcome to the password protected area admin. So you have seen that how we can do the brute force attack on the applications because it was on security level low. We were able to do this attack. If you want to practice more attacks, I have shared these website links with you. Okay, Tariq sir, if you can share these links in the WhatsApp group because participants are requiring that. So what, we, yes sir, yeah. So sir, what we can do tomorrow is if these participants are interested to work on DVWA application,